Hey developers, today we're gonna look at five different resources that you should know if you're looking to learn Web3. So I've been scouring the internet for these resources. I've looked on Twitter threads. I've looked on a bunch of different discords. So these are what I've been using to learn Web3 and I think you should be using them too. Now there's a lot of things happening in the Web3 world ecosystem and there's different definitions of it. So we'll quickly look at the definition of Web3 before we begin. And also, if you're looking to get into a community that's interested in Web3 development, I have a new, brand new Discord channel. I'll put a link in the description below and also in the comments. Go ahead and join it. I'm looking for more people. We're trying to get a community together. So yeah, take a look at that too. All right, let's deep dive in. So first, what is Web3? So I really like this definition. So Web3 enhances the internet as we know it today with a few other related characteristics. Web3 is verifiable, trustless, self-governing, permissionless, distributed, robust, stateful, native native built-in payment instead web3 applications are either run on the blockchain decentralized networks or many peer-to-peer -peer nodes so that's the kind of the way i like to think about web3 it's it's more of a decentralized system it's trustless it's self-governing it's permissionless and there's a lot of really cool things out there you may have heard of nfts there's dApps. there's something called DAOs. i'm not going to go into the definition of what all those things are are completely in the dark. I will put a link to this article from Free Code Camp so you can read it and really understand where the web's going and why you should be interested in it. Okay, so my first resource that I have here is the DeFi Developer Roadmap. This is cool. It's a part of an open source project. I've been looking at these different roadmaps. There's a whole bunch of them out there, but I feel like this one is one of the better ones. For example, you can see here to start off with, you have the basics. Like you should probably know about how like the web works and HTTP and HTTPS. And I think this is really where most people start. I feel like when they learn web three is the smart contracts. Those are the underlying contracts that dictate the behavior when you're working on the blockchain for something. So for example, you buy an NFT, a non fungible token. There's usually a contract behind that, that dictates how much, money is going to the owner of the NFT. It might even distribute to other people that help create it. And it helps facilitating transferring that ownership from the previous owner to you. So this is definitely extremely important. So there's a whole bunch of tools of compiling, testing, there's hard hat, life cycles, Ethereum, high level, basic smart contract. I feel like this, this is really the starting point for most Web3 developers. Here's some step two is like, how do you do back end development, Ethereum, EVM, build tools, IDEs, remix IDE, uh, Solidity, you may heard that, package managers. This is gonna have a lot of crossover with the Web2 world as well. If you are already a web developer, a back end developer, this is gonna seem somewhat familiar with you, some of these tooling that they have. And then like the rabbit hole keeps on going deeper with Web3 for so uh, software development. There's different, of course, front ends. I've worked with Vue.js a lot. Vue.js is a perfectly fine, fine, fine front end for Web3. I've done a few videos doing it, but React is probably a little bit more popular, but it's no problem using either. There's security that you have to worry about, DeFi, or decentralized finance different chains, L1, L2 solutions. So yeah, I like this resource. I would check it out, I'll put a link in the description. The next up is by Nader Dabit. It's the complete guide to full stack Ethereum development. When I first started learning development, I looked at a couple of Nader's blog posts. He has a couple of more. So I would check out his Twitter too, but this is a great way to start. Uh, he talks about different, uh, how he works with his client frameworks using hard hat, ethers.js the API protocol. I'd say hard hat in ethers is where you see a lot of tutorials on the internet. They, a lot of people use those too. And yeah, he just goes through all the different pieces of setting it up. MetaMask is probably one of the most popular if using Ethereum development, React, the graph, uh, and he just goes on and on. So definitely a great resource, something I would highly recommend checking out. Now, the next thing I do is after you've kind of understand the terms, you understand what Web3 is, you kind of understand the different terms. You've looked up some of these things. You've done like two or three different tutorials. Maybe you pulled some of these Natter Dabit ones up and a couple of the other ones he's done. I like to kind of deep dive and see what real people are doing. So OpenSea is like an NFT marketplace. And what's really cool about this is that you can look at any of these NFT projects and get an idea of how they were created. So if you look at turf plots, 
and you're like, okay, uh, let's take a look at this. I have no idea about this, by the way. If you, I don't know if this is a good NFT or bad NFT. I just want to demonstrate what you can do. If you click on any of the NFTs here, you have some details about it and it has this contract address. And you click on this contract address and it brings up Etherscan. And I believe too, if you're on a different project like a Solana or, or another one, Polygon, it will bring up that Polygon scan or the Solana scan. And this gives information about a lot of these transaction hashes. At first, it looks a little intimidating, but what's cool about it is you can click this little contract tab and you can literally look at the contract and how it was created. So this will give you a lot of ideas of like, what does this contract do? How was it created? You can see a lot of these contracts too are open source. So there's this called this website called Open Zeppelin, which we'll take a look at in a second. But it kind of gives you an idea of how other people are creating contracts. And a lot of Web3 is creating contracts and creating these things that work with these different chains, these different blockchain. And that leads me to this Open Zeppelin. So Open Zeppelin is, you can see here, if you look here, it's documentation to explore guys to integrate Open Zeppelin security protocols to all aspects of Ethereum development and operations. So typically when you work in Ethereum and you're creating your smart contracts, which if you followed the first two guides, you kind of have an idea of how to start working with them. You don't necessarily have to write everything yourself. There are projects like Open Zeppelin that have like a whole bunch of contracts that you can just pull into your projects without having to do it yourself. So you don't have to do everything yourself. Maybe at first you try to do some of it yourself, but you definitely want to use this. And they have a big list of free open source contracts that you can use, uh, tokens, utilities, like there's a whole bunch of stuff. Let's take a look at their, you can see here they have a stable API, open Zeppelin contract 2.0 release. So here is their GitHub. And if you look in their contracts, you can see a whole bunch of ones here, finance, access, mocks, utils. So you can access a lot of these. I play around with this and see how you can use it inside your projects because it's well worth it so you don't have to write everything yourself. And the last resource I want to say is there's a whole bunch of these out there. There's these communities. By the way, if you made it this far in the video, thank you very much. Uh, make sure you join my Discord. I'm creating a community on Web3, Web Development, Vue, React. Join it. We're starting off. We're trying to get more people in. But anyways, I'm really impressed by this build space. It's a, a free community. They have a pretty big Discord channel. Really nice looking website here but they have a lot of really cool step-by-step -step guides. They're mostly blogs with a few videos. So if you're looking at a lot of video con, if you're looking for a lot of video, this is probably not the place to be, but if you want to like just a bunch of different projects, they're neat. They have projects on Ethereum, Solana, NFTs on Solana and both, uh, creating DAOs. Yeah, so it has a ton of information there. So I would check all that out. Okay, so that is what I have today for you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure you click that like button, click that subscribe button, and share this with your friends if you thought it was helpful. Thanks.